imagine what it will be like on the day of judgment, more on that later. But for now, let us make clear that the reason why I could not be born in the Spirit was my delight and willingness to sin. I was determined to yield to temptation. On the other hand, God is holy and does not tolerate my sin. As much as he loved Adam, God could not put up with his forewarned disobedience. Someone fearfully asked, Who can stand in the presence of the Lord, this holy God? No one, my friend, absolutely no one. Regardless of what you believe about the Bible and the Ten Commandments, God wrote his standard of moral perfection within my heart and yours. For example, if you were to ask me, have you ever told a lie? And I answered, never in my life. How would you respond? What would you think of my character? Exactly. If you had some respect for me, now you lost it. Because you were able to see the wickedness of my heart and worse yet, I consider myself a self-righteous sinner far above you and all humanity. In fact, perfect, always telling the truth. I am fortunate not to live in one of those tribes in South America and also in Africa, where the chief tries a liar, a thief, or an adulterer with a hot knife. If I'm innocent, my tongue will be moist, sizzling my saliva, but if I'm guilty, my tongue will be dried and burned. Imagine a hot knife before my eyes. I would not dare lie to the chief. I would confess, yes, I did it. Who told these aboriginal tribal people that lying, stealing, and committing adultery are sins and should be punished by law? No one did. It was preloaded in their hearts by the Creator. Listen to the words of the scriptures. God's law is written in their hearts. And here's one very, very important point to consider, my friend. The hot knife could force me to confess, but not to repent. Deep within my heart, I coveted that forbidden fruit, hoping God would not find out. And if he did, he would see it as a mistake, not as an act of rebellion. Unfortunately for me, People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Can you see now why Adam and Eve had to be driven out of the Garden of Eden? Their apparent small disobedience has grown big and strong, destroying many lives. God in His love and mercy wants to revive your spirit. To have that deep, close and intimate relationship with you just like in the beginning. But if you hold on to your naturally sinful heart, your spirit will remain dead and only God has the power to bring it back to life. Only God has the power to transform your soul and change your heart. The fool says in his heart, There is no God. Of course, there is no God for the fool, my friend. How can a dead spirit experience the living God? Listen to this account after Peter spoke to a multitude of people in Jerusalem. Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God, my friend, entered their minds, cut through their souls, down to the center of their hearts. Peter gave them the key to the only power you and I have, that is, repentance. Only then, God will forgive our lifetime of disobedience and rebellion, namely, our willful sin. Once you and I are released from the penalty of our sin, God will send His Holy Spirit to unite with your spirit and with mind, thus reviving the real you and the real me that died in the Garden of Eden in Adam. Do you want to be born of the Spirit like these people asked Peter? Or do you rather be the boss of your life? God is patiently waiting for you while there is time. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What happens after you die? It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. After I die, my friend, 
I will give an account of my life and so will you. We have an appointment with our Creator that we can't miss. Those of us who were revived by the Spirit of God will spend eternity with Him. But those who rejected the price paid by Jesus Christ on the cross for their sins will be condemned by their own conscience into eternal torment in hell. I know this sounds mean, cruel and unfair, my friend, but as much as God loves you, He cannot tolerate your desire and willingness to sin. For those reasons, He provided an escape to restore the loss of Adam into a gain for you in Jesus Christ. God has the power to quicken your spirit alive. You have the power to repent. Moses told his generation, Today, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. The same challenge is before you, my friend. You will either die with your sins forgiven unto eternal life, or you will pay for a lifetime of willful rebellion in hell. If you think I'm crazy, that's okay. But if the Word of God has pierced through your heart, put your pride aside and humble yourself before God Almighty on your knees and cry out for mercy. For whoever should call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When He sees that you are brokenhearted for your sin and in true repentance want to turn your life over to Him, God will be pleased. Forgive your sins and send His Holy Spirit to unite with your spirit, giving you life, life eternal. Don't despise the gift of eternal life, paid with the blood of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. No good deed of yours can pay or replace His priceless and loving sacrifice. God bless you.